HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Powder donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. You probably know that Audible.com is a leading provider of audiobooks, but you may not know all of the other content that they have to share. So we are offering you a free trial. You can go to audibletrial.com slash business growth, get your free trial and explore for yourself. Over the years, Accelerate Your Business Growth uh, podcast has um, continued to gain recognition as a great resource for uh, small business owners, sales professionals, business leaders, and that is because of the guests. Uh, these are folks who have expertise in particular areas of business, and they join me for a conversation where they share that expertise with all of you. Today is no exception. My guest today is Will Christensen. With over a decade of business development experience, it's safe to say Will has an elevated passion for fulfilling what the end user desires and efficiently working towards faster iterations. He's the co-founder of Data Automation and also heads up business development for RoundSphere, a tech incubator dedicated to developing new opportunities through software. He enjoys tinkering with cutting edge technology, apps and systems, and loves to create innovative solutions for businesses and individual clients. Thanks so much for joining me today, Will. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you here. We're going to be talking about automation and, and uh, based on what I know about you and that you love to tinker with this stuff, uh, <laughs> this is going to be of an enlightening and educational conversation, at least for me, uh, for sure. 
Tinkering, uh, is, tinkering is one of the things I do best. Aha, uh -huh, got it, wonderful. Okay, so talk to me about, so you know, you're all about automation. So talk to me about the pros of automation. You know, um, I would say the number one pro of automation is allowing you to scale your business without having to scale the people. Um, when you scale with automation, you are essentially handing off a task or a duty uh, to a robot. So it, it just really allows you to hand that over. And um, there's no, what's the best way to put this? There's no subjectivity. Um, the robot doesn't wake up one day and say, ah, oh, I just don't feel like going into work, right? <laughs> like it's, it's, it's a very, you know, ones and zeros. Yeah. Um, and so I really like that aspect of it. There are things obviously that you can't hand off to a robot. You can't hand off to, um, to, to a, a piece of code or, or a, to an automation. Um, and, 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 you know, that's some of the cons, but, but I, I love the ability to, to build out and say, okay, now I can handle what two, what two people would have had to handle, but I did it all by, um, you know, handing those off to a, a robot. I, I, I talk about automation and I talk about, you know, um, how to find the pivot points. Um, and, and the three words that I use to describe those pivot points are automate, delegate, eliminate. And I actually started a podcast of my own um, called Automate, Delegate, Eliminate. And, and that, that, uh, that idea, that automate, delegate, or eliminate is, is what you're doing as you scale a business. Okay. So, um, Let's talk about that. So, so because that sounds to me like that is um, a, a three-step like decision, right? So we're making a decision. Is am I understanding this right? That we're going to automate it, we're going to delegate it, or we're going to eliminate it? Yeah. So we call it a pivot point, um, and, and the pivot point comes from um, that moment when you stop and say, okay, how are we going to actually grow this thing? Where are we going? I mean, it, very similar to your, the title of your podcast, accelerate your business, right? That yeah. moment when you're, it's like, okay, it is time to push down the pedal. The how of pushing down that pedal um, goes into those three, it, that three prong decision. Are we going to automate, delegate, or eliminate this task? And the only way to grow your business is to decide to eliminate tasks that aren't adding to the bottom line, to delegate tasks that can and should be delegated to a human being, or to automate tasks that should be handed to a robot. Okay. Is there, so I guess my question is, how do you deter, I get the eliminate, I think that one might be, easier but i guess i'm wondering how a business owner would determine or you know a, a business leader would determine whether something should be delegated or automated mm -hmm. so i actually have a, a, a litmus test that i use uh specifically for that and, and and just so you and your listeners are aware this is something i've developed over the past four years and I'm happy to share. Um, it, it's been super exciting to kind of pick this apart and see where it's going. So the litmus test that I use is, could this task be handed to another employee in the business who, let's say that they're a, a, an intern with a basic level of understanding of maybe Excel, Google Sheets, um, and email. So, so they don't really have a ton of experience, but could it be handed to someone like that and would it take me the same amount of time to do it as it would to teach someone to do it? So you got to think like it's something that I only have to teach them how to do once. And, and you can kind of get a feel for these because you'll start going through them and your mind will start to numb and you'll just start to <laughs> you'll be like, why am I doing this? And that is a good indication of something that should be automated. Um, and, and it's because it's the type of thing that a computer doesn't need. It doesn't need a lot of brain power. So you're looking for that, you know, when does the brain power start to like really spark and you need something more? Um, those types of tasks are things that should be delegated. Okay. So, so if you look at it, you're like, oh, you know what? It's going to take me 
you know, an hour to teach someone how to do this 15 minute task, that's probably because that task requires some real brain power. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's the key. It, it, yeah. Think about, think about making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, right? If the individual has a basic level of understanding of the kitchen, right? A basic <laughs> level understanding of what a piece of bread is, what jam is, what peanut yeah. butter is, making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you, you teach them once they got it, yeah. right? Like, like, yeah. but if it's the kind of thing where now, now it, you know, you've got an individual who comes to the counter and you have to assess based on their look, demeanor, how they ask, what they're looking for, which type of peanut butter jelly sandwich. And you got about 15 different types of peanut butter and 15 different types of jam. Oh, and, and some other seasonings that you put on there to make it like the ultimate peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Now, in order to teach someone how to get that right, there's some intuition that has to be added to the mix. And you may have to teach them five, six, seven, 10, 12 times before they're gonna start to get the knack themselves. And that intuition is something you can't teach to a computer. So that uh, has to be delegated. Okay. Boy, that that thank you for that. That that is um, crazy clear. I, I appreciate that. And the example is good because boy, it, it really um, drove it home. Now you mentioned before that um, there is a con to automating, but but are there other Negatives. Oh yeah. So, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am. My my wife would call me a little bit lazy sometimes. Um, I call it incredibly efficient. Of course. Um, I I am the type who I will spend eight hours on one of my own personal tasks, figuring out how to automate it. So, for example, I I have my house hooked up to Alexa. And I've got, you know, seven of them scattered throughout the house. And I've got all sorts of dumb little things that we've done with them to, to make them go. So, for example, I can say, Alexa, trigger Alex home. Alex is my, my six-year-old. And it will actually send a text message to the family where Alex is most often um, over, uh, what, what, you know, what, where, where she's uh, playing, her friend's house. Mm -hmm. It'll send a text message from my phone over to them saying, hey, do you mind sending Alex home? Um, and um, I mean, I'm just a nut that way. I love to automate. And so you can imagine that um, I found all sorts of things that you should not automate. <laughs> because I like did. Like sending your six-year-old home? I'm, I'm just curious. <laughs> well, no, actually sending the six-year-old home worked pretty good. Oh, um, OK. <laughs> yeah, no, no. The, it, 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 I mean, it saves you from. I mean, you, you got to think about it. It really wasn't saving that much. But but the idea yeah. of not having to pull out the phone and type it in, and you're typing in the same thing every dang time, um, yeah. because that's where you go. Yeah. That, I, it, it was nice not to have to pull out the phone anymore. And my wife started using it, and so that's one that that one that's one that actually worked out okay. But that's <laughs> a good example of one where it's like, oh, there's a personal touch here that's needed, and. And, you know, eventually my neighbor is going to hear one of these podcasts where I talk about it a little bit. She's going to be like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's honestly one of the things you have to look for when you're automating is does this automation have an impact on the relationship I have with the people around me? Oh. And if it does, you have to be careful. Now, I think if my neighbor were to find out about this pot, you know, listen to a podcast and laugh at it, they'd probably smirk and be like, oh, maybe you should teach me how to do that too. So that when my kids are at his house, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there'd be much social impact, right? On the relationship to, yeah. to, to damage it. But let's say that we're talking about something like an invoice um, that you're sending to a client. Um, invoices are a very, and, <clears throat> especially for small businesses, they're a very emotional thing. When you send the, the final invoice, what are you telling that client? You're telling them, I'm done. I'm yeah. done. When your kid comes to you, at, when they're, they're cleaning their room, and they pull the invoice, I'm done, right? <laughs> they, 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 I'm done. What are you going to go do? Check the room. You're going to go check the room. Yeah. <laughs> So if you automate the sending of an invoice, 
and it isn't the right trigger or it goes too soon, what's the feeling you have towards that kid when he says, I'm done, yeah. and you go look, and he ain't done? Yeah. <laughs> so, so invoices are a very delicate thing to be automated. And so a lot of times in those situations, if I automate an invoice, I will add a second and even third confirmation. So like, it, like it'll, it'll like, let's say we're doing Trello and we, we drag a card into Trello to the done column and that triggers the invoice to go off. I will send myself a Slack message or a text message saying, are you sure you're done? And then, and then I type in yes, and then it will send another text message to a developer or, you know, somebody else who worked on it and said, hey, uh, Will says he's done. Are you sure you're done? And then when they type yes, it says, okay, sending the invoice, right? So, uh -huh. so it, you, you can build some things into that, but that's a lot more work, right? And so yeah. should I automate sending invoices first or should I automate, you know, uh, notifications that I just got a lead in and that lead seems to be worth 10 X all the other leads that came in. Right. So, yeah. so, so that notification that's coming in, that's telling you, Hey, you just got a lead that's worth 10 X all of the other leads that are coming in. You want to pay attention to that one first. That's an automation that the client never sees, never affects any, any relationships. So yeah. should be automated first because it doesn't need as many checks and balances. Got it. Okay. So that, that's one of the cons. If you automate the wrong thing, you can really negative. I mean, think about your customers in terms of like, like if they feel like they're just a, a cog in the wheel, if they feel like they're being treated like a, like a, uh, a tool, so to speak, yeah. um, they're not going to want to do anything with you again. Right? right. The idea is to create an automation or a system that makes them feel wanted, loved, um, and and a part of your business instead of being, you know, like like if they get that invoice too early, they're like, well, freak, and you're like, well, yeah, no, like you know, I I sorry, I automated that. And they're like, well, obviously you weren't done, so you you don't really care about me. You just care about getting the invoice out. Yeah, right, right. You just want to get paid, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's that's a big con uh, for automation. Another con for automation that I've seen is um, if you don't debug it. So later on in the podcast, we're going to talk about why you should do things manually before they automate them. But yeah, yeah. Um, so so uh, if you don't do them manually beforehand, this is another con that comes up a lot. Um, you will accidentally have an error that comes through. So let's say that like part of the uh, part of the automation goes in and gets the invoice amount from some some system, and you didn't correctly program that or correctly pick up that piece, mm. um, and it sends the wrong amount. Well, let's say that you're one of these smaller businesses that does very like micro transactions. Let's say that you sell pens, and the thing about your pens is that you actually put people's names on the pens. Right. And so, you know, you got to think, uh, how long does it take to put a name on a pen? Maybe it's five to 10 minutes. And how many of those can you do in a day? So, so now you're talking about like a hundred pens and every single one of those pens gets the wrong invoice amount. Oh. Now what became it, what was a very small problem when you were doing it manually, cause you caught it, but you were doing it manually and you're like, Oh crap, that's the wrong name or the, or the wrong, the wrong invoice amount. That goes yeah. out to one customer. If it's automated, it goes out to all hundred. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, so there's another con of automation is you can exacerbate an error um, into the masses. And there are things that you can do to make sure that you don't let that go. But those are some of the cons. There, there, wow. we, could, we could go on because there are positive yeah. <laughs> things to every side of every coin. But those are, those are two big ones that I see. Um, is exacerbating errors and um, making negative emotional impact when you choose to automate the wrong thing. So that sort of feels like if, if there was a business owner and they were starting out with figuring out what to automate, it should be, they should start with stuff that's only internal. It's a great place to start. One of the dangerous things about starting with only internal things is sometimes you leave the big 
really juicy opportunity for automation um, out, out to dry. So sometimes it can be external, but you got to think about when does it affect my, um, my relationship. So, so I, 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 got, I always go back to that rule of thumb of the relationship because sometimes even though it's external, it doesn't really affect the relationship. And so it's not a big deal. So, but, but yeah, no, internal yeah. is a great rule of thumb because generally speaking, you know, internal things don't really affect the relationships with my clients. Right. Just with the people you work with. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, which now obviously there's a downside there too, right? If you accidentally automate something that you yeah. <laughs> best for everybody internally, you know, that's where it is, which honestly gets right into the next pieces of what we want to talk about. Okay, cool. So, um, when someone is trying to figure out what to automate, who should they be talking to? Yeah, that's a really good question. And I would say the best person to talk to as far as automation is concerned is going to be the, the, the people who are actually doing the work manually. So I tell people that they should do their, their tasks five times manually before they automate anything. And a lot of times people are like, well, five times like like what if the task's like an hour long and i'm like well then you better do it 10 times and they're like what do you what that's 10 <laughs> hours of manual work will why wouldn't i automate that and, and i and i tell them when something takes that amount of time the amount of intuition the amount of decisions that have to be made i mean think about it how many decisions do you make in a five minute time period a lot of times none yeah. like you maybe make the decision to keep watching tv or keep listening to this podcast, but that was a decision you made an hour ago or you made 15 minutes ago. So it's a decision that you're, you're making again. So really, you didn't make any decisions in the past five minutes. Yeah. Well, if you talk about an hour, find me a, there are not very many situations where you don't make a decision in an hour long time frame. Even if you're at the movie theater, you probably ate the popcorn, right? Like you chose to eat the pot. So, so the amount of time that goes by increases the amount of decisions. The amount of decisions that happen inside a process increase the complexity of the automation. And so, so the shorter the task, the less, if, if you're, let's say that, like, like I, my general rule of thumb is probably 15 to 30 minutes. Like if it's a 15 to 30 minute task, do it five times manually and then go automate. And that's because you have to navigate the twists and turns. So if you're going to delegate this, and I like to tell people, like when, when, you, when you're going to hand this off to another human being, so, so going back to who do we talk to, mm -hmm. um, I don't, I, I, I'll go into a business and I'll pitch the C-level executives, the, the CEO, the founder, those guys on automation. And then they're like, okay, well, let's get started. And I'm like, okay, cool. Let me talk to the lowest paid individual at the company next. And they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, that's where your automation opportunities are. And they're like, but I, I don't pay that person very much. So like, why would I want to automate their stuff? Is that because I turn around and say, because what you've given to them should not be in the hands of a human being. It should be in the hands of a robot. And that individual needs to be using creativity and brain power to actually add value to your bottom line instead of pulling a lever. Uh... So who do you talk to? You talk to the people on the lowest end of the totem pole. And you make sure, oh, you're, you know, you're currently uh, sorting all of this mail when it comes in and figuring out where it's going. So, so the emails are flowing in. You're the one who has to say, oh, that's an invoice forward to accounts payable. Oh, that's a check forwards to accounts receivable. Oh, that's an invoice. Uh, 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 stop, stop. There's an automation for that. You can go in and create an email forwarder that listens for the keywords inside that email and automatically forward that to the people so you never even see it in your inbox again. So, so that individual now has been, been, been freed up for creativity and they can start taking on more of that. And, and I find that that's actually where the rubber meets the road anyway in a business. I mean, if you're, if you're, if you're able to handle those sorts of things, a lot of times, you know, what really propels a business forward is some of those initial things. And then I go back to the C-level executive and say, okay, you know, Johnny, who is getting paid 12 bucks an hour and now has 50% more capacity. What else can we put on his plate? Um, yeah. And that gets exciting, right? Because then you can say, okay, well, let's go look at this piece or, or push these around or, 
oh, that's cool. I was actually going to hire another Johnny, but now I don't need to because I can hand Johnny the second person's tasks and we get it in there. So that's where I start. Um, and, and it's all about, like I said, all about picking apart what's going on and seeing who's done it five times manually and talking to that individual. Because if you talk to the individual who hasn't done it five times manually, you might as well go home. Yeah. Yeah. Because they have no idea. Well, they're like, well, I know the end outcome is this really awesome report that I get in Excel and it's got all these pivot tables. Um, so I want it to look like that at the end. And you're like, okay, great. Well, where did this come from? And the person who didn't do it manually is like, um, well, I know they download some data from Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> and I know they download some data from our ERP system. And I know they download, you know, <clears throat> they don't have any idea. They know where it came from. Sometimes they don't even know where it came from. All they know is that it has metrics. And so you have to talk to the person who's been doing it manually. Okay. I'm going to take a quick sponsor break and then I want to follow up on that. Go. Go for it. Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast is happy to be sponsored by Audible.com. And while Audible.com has thousands of uh, audiobook titles in – all sorts of genres, what you may not know is that they have a whole bunch of other content as well. So they have podcasts and audible originals and guided meditations, which I will say this year I am loving. Um, and, and, and here's also a really cool thing that with all this different audio content, being able to get it all in one place makes it so much easier because you don't have to, you know, go to one platform and then to another platform. You just have everything where it is. So I think you will find um, it valuable as well. So we're offering you a free trial. Go to audibletrial.com slash business growth. Check it out for yourself. Explore around. Explore the audio books. Explore the other programming that they have and see what resonates with you. Today we're speaking with Will Christensen about using automation to get your time back. Okay, before the sponsor break, Will, you know, you were talking about, you know, going to the um, person, you know, lowest level person and starting there with, with automation, it frees them up so that they can be using their creativity. Um, it feels to me like the leader in the company would have to be uh, wired in such a way that they thought that was a valuable exercise. And I don't mean the automation, I mean being able to pull these people into a more impactful role. Yeah, no, <clears throat> the, the leader is the one who sets the, the tone for the company. He's the one, he or she is the one who sets the, the culture um, and a culture of automation and a culture of, you know, it's okay to raise your hand and say, I think there's a better way is a culture that's going to grow and, and it's going yeah. to succeed. So if you don't set that culture inside your business and set that culture of like, it's okay for, you know, the low man on the totem pole to raise their hand and say, Hey, I think I'm probably wasting my time here. Um, you're going to run into a lot of oper automation opportunities that never get brought up because again, the, the higher level individuals are not going to be handed those tasks um, that they're, they're, they're handed down lower in the totem pole. And so, right. so creating that, that culture where everybody and anybody can raise their hand and say, Hey, I think there might be a better system besides Trello. Um, for us to be using. I, I have a developer um, on my team who, who we, we use Trello for managing our development process and our tasks. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty cool project management system. And he came across another one called ClickUp, um, which is kind of new and hot. Everybody's kind of paying attention to it right now because it's got a lot of systems inside it. And he said, wow, I think this could really be helpful. So he brought that up to our project manager and the project manager brought that up to me. And I was like, well, yes, let's definitely, definitely investigate. Um, and it's actually a, a system that's been recommended to me by a couple of people as well. So no sponsorship there. I just have heard good things about it. We're investing, yeah. but 
but it's an example of someone who's a developer who's feet on the street um, bringing something to the table saying, hey, I think we could improve the whole process if we maybe considered this new system. And so as a leader, it's your job to empower your individuals to raise their hand and say, you know, hey, I'm working on the assembly line here, but I think there might be an opportunity here to make this process more efficient or to make this better for everybody. So yeah, you're absolutely right. That does have to come from the top. Yeah, because I could see that being really scary for people because you know they think they were going to automate themselves right out of a job. Mm -hmm. And so if you if you don't if you create a situation where you are letting people go as soon as they automate their jobs, no one's ever going to tell you about automation again. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's like this really shocking thing. People are very uh, self-preservant, uh, right? They're, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're all about like, mm, I'm going to protect my own. Like you, you start to threaten someone's livelihood, watch what happens, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so you have to create an environment where when that individual does that, you give them a raise and find something right. else. find something else for them to do. And that's actually a little difficult to do as a business owner because you look at it and say, oh, sweet. I paid you to figure out this thing and now I'm going to pay you more because you figured out this thing. Well, heck yes you are because look at what they just did to the bottom line. Yeah. So, so it's, it's hard for, for huh. business owners to see that sometimes the, the natural tendency is to, to say good job and pat them on the back and walk away. And that right. if you find somebody like if you're lucky enough to get one of these rising stars who comes in, they start somewhere. The rising stars start somewhere. If you're lucky enough to get one of those rising stars who comes into your company on the ground floor, they're going to be the ones who raise their hand and say that. If you just pat them on the back and say, good job, and then walk away, he's looking for another job. Yeah. Immediately, he's looking for another job because he realizes that you don't really value his gift. And so if you, if you instead of patting him on the back and saying, good job, you turn him in and say, okay, help me find other things, and we're going to tie your compensation to how much you can automate and improve down here. Like all of a sudden his wheels start turning and you may have a potential future business owner who rises in the company and eventually takes it over when you're, when, when you're ready to retire. Right. So, so yeah. you got to be really careful with those, with those people who are um, doing the manual work inside your company because they, I mean, it's like I said before, it's where the rubber meets the road. Well, yeah, I'm totally with you on this. And I, and I feel like um, there was a time when this could never have been a thing, you know, when, when business was done differently between employees and, and owners or managers and that that time is over. And we have a whole new generation of people in the workforce who want to be a part of something. Mm -hmm. Well, and I would say that it's important to recognize that there are still going to be people. I was talking to a, a lady who, who runs an e-commerce company. Um, and she has a whole bunch of people who make things, right? And, and they like run a production and they sell a bunch on Amazon and all these different places. And, and she said, you know, there, there are definitely people out there still today who want to come in and have a nine to five where they clock yeah. in, clock out, clock in, clock out, and, and they don't have to take any of their work home and they don't really want to be part of something. There still are people out there like that. And yeah. so you have to pay attention to who the individuals are that you've got on the floor. Um, it, you know, if they are like that, then you have to create a relationship and boundaries that create a place where they can thrive and succeed. But like you said, there are a lot of people coming into the workplace today who are interested in being part of something and interested in growing and interested in making something better. And those individuals have to be handled with care because they are what I would call your greatest automation advocates. They're the individuals who are willing to go and learn the new systems, go and learn. So I'll mention a tool that I use a lot for automation, Zapier or Workado or PySync or one of these many others that does that sort of um, automation, syncing different systems, pushing things around that way. Um, they're, they're individuals who will go learn Google Sheets formulas to, to organize your data and connect things up in a way that is better there. Those individuals need to be fostered so they can turn around to their coworkers and help them 
in turn kind of look at those opportunities and grow. So it's, it's important that you kind of pick that apart and, and identify who are your automation advocates and then compensate them accordingly. Turn them into an individual who actually has the power to do that. Go find, you don't have to get hire data automation necessarily, but go find an automation company, put them in the back pocket of that automation advocate and send them, you know, send them in as a secret agent to go find the inefficient opportunities to automate inside the company. And they're, they're going to become a rock star inside the company. Everybody's going to be like, oh my gosh, I love it when, you know, Susie comes around because Susie seems to know so much about Google Sheets and Excel. Like I was downloading this thing and I was having to like manually look this up in a CSV and manually pull out all of these attachments and move this stuff around. And Susie came around and she's like, wait, wait, why are you doing it that way? Let me show you something cool. And she showed me how to, you know, set up email forwarders and, you know, connect Zapier to push this stuff around. And she wrote a little Excel formula for me. And now it's just like working. Like I was super exciting. Wow. That's what you're looking for is, is who is that individual who can come in and do that? And maybe it's someone on the executive team. Um, but I found that the executive team is generally busy enough trying to, like steer the ship that they yeah. have a hard time yeah. putting feet on the ground to understand and automate. So when you discover these people, should that be a position in the company, you know, that, that they are like the chief automation I officer? I, I actually was reading several articles that that is going to be a, and actually already is, in some of the, the enterprise companies that have kind of figured some of this out already, it, it is a title. Um, mm. it, it, is, it is something that people are looking into more and more because there are so many opportunities now for no code solutions. If you wanna, oh, if you wanna lose an afternoon, go start Googling no code solutions and just, <laughs> and just looking at all of the different opportunities that are out there to build things without having to code anything. I mean, it's, it's amazing what's out there. So if I were building a company, you know, from the ground up, um, and, and it's funny because our entire team becomes automation advocates. I, I was talking to my um, executive assistant earlier this week and she came to me and said, oh yeah, we're really excited about this new guy that's coming on um, because, you know, he's kind of being brought up to be an expert in Zapier and some of these other things. And what we're giving him first is a whole bunch of these internal processes that you've been wanting to automate, Will. And I was like, yes! Like, I was so excited because she became an automation advocate for us. Yeah. And, and now he's going to be an, auto, an automation advocate. And, and so we kind of try to foster that across the team, across everybody. When you work in a company called data automation, yeah, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, if you're not automating, you're kind of like not drinking your own Kool-Aid. Pretty much. Uh, so, yeah. No, it, we definitely look to create that sort of a culture where everybody becomes an automation advocate. But, but if you're in a company where that's not, you know, the Kool-Aid you're selling, yeah, I would definitely recommend identifying, like do out, do a company wide email and say, Hey, we're going to start adopting a culture of automation where we focus on automation, delegation and elimination in a way that helps the whole company grow. And if you, if those three words kind of spark something for you and you're like, Oh, I think I'd be interested in that. Um, go ahead and write me a, you know, two to three paragraph email describing why you would want to be in a role like that and then promote someone. Yeah. Yeah. God, that's so interesting. And, and so if there's a business owner listening and they don't have that person yet and they're, they're not sure who's who or, or, you know, they haven't quite gone there, but they are interested in automation. It's, I have a two part question. And the first part is, how do they find these apps and, and these pro these no code solutions um, that can help them with specific processes and um, do uh, like are any of them free like is there a free version for really small companies yeah no there are um, so, so I've mentioned Zapier a couple of times. That's because Zapier is one of the first places that I went to automate. Um, I, uh, I was super excited about Zapier. It's, it's got free, a free version of it <clears throat> where you can automate up to a hundred tasks every single month. Um, 100% free. 
Um, and so, you know, depending on what you're looking at or where you're trying to go, it, it's absolutely got a free version. And you'd be surprised how many of them are out there that have the, the, same, the same sort of thing. So, so what I do, when I, let, let's get into that specifics. What do I do when I have something specific that I want um, to automate? Um, the first thing I do is stop and say, have I done this five times manually? If not, write it down on a sticky note on your desk. <clears throat> so I tell people to use um, uh, 15 one, one. So more than 15 minutes a day, more than an hour a week, or more than an hour a month. That's what, that's, that's what I start when I start looking for automation opportunities, right? 15 one, one on a sticky note, put it on the side of your desk and remember 15 minutes a day, an hour a week or an hour a month. When you find a task that you're doing over and over again, that meets that criteria, write it down, then put a tick mark next to it. And when you start to hit five tick marks on any one of those, that's when I start to Google it. And Google is by far the most fantastic tool for discovering what other people are doing to automate this process. So, let me give you a, a specific example, example for a specific client. Um, this is a client of mine out of Colorado, and he sells bison meat, of all things. Okay. Um, and he was selling bison meat to restaurants. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, for those of you who are listening to this podcast in 2021, <clears throat> this is, uh, you know, the 15th of July in 2020. We are still in the thick of, of COVID-19. In, in March of this year, one second, excuse me. Sure. Um, in March of this year, all of his business dried up because he was selling <laughs> to restaurants. Wow. So he put out a post on social media and said, um, hey, I got a whole bunch of ice in me and a family to support. Um, I'm going out of business unless you guys want to buy some ice in me. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing went viral. Like, like the, I mean, this is the power of social media, right? Like people were so, he did such a good job like describing his situation and it just touched people's hearts to the point where they posted it all over the place. So that's one thing. If your business is in trouble, probably post on social media. That's probably a good idea. But um, <laughs> he posted it, it went crazy. And, and what happened is he created a little jot form on his website where people could order and then he's now manually going into QuickBooks and like spitting out an invoice and sending it to them. And, and the situation was so um, infuriating and, and manual that he was like, okay, so I've got this form and I got this invoice. How do I connect those up? And so um, what you got to do in that situation is Google it. So you come in and you say form to capture payments online. If you Google form to capture payments online, there are a hundred different SaaS companies, software as a service companies, these people who run these automation companies um, who want you to search for that. And they are going to pay Google to, to get listed on that page. Uh, my, my phone's going off thinking I said, hey, Google. Um, <laughs> automation. Automation. They, they pay Google to... Um, to, to get on that page. So pay attention to the paid advertising. This is one situation when you're searching for a solution, like I want help with X, Y, or Z, pay attention to the paid ads. You will be shocked at how often they are more relevant than the organic ones when you're solution searching. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and it's because um, Google's trying to find you the most relevant result based on the content that's on the page, not necessarily the most relevant solution. The solution provider, the guy who, who programmed that ads campaign, is looking for that specific phrase. Okay, so so um, go to Google, type in that phrase. You know, capture payments online um, form. Then um, there's a part on Google's page at the very bottom that says people also searched for. Scroll down to that part and mm. read through what other people are calling what you think you want until you find something that matches more succinctly or that you feel like is more common for the way they're phrasing it. So I actually spend probably five minutes crafting my search 
before I actually start looking at the results on the page. That's fascinating. So, and, and, and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to think like the masses. I know yeah. that my brain doesn't work like most of the world. I tend to be a little weird that way. And so I don't phrase things the same way as everybody else. And so when I type in, you know, payment form or, or how to capture online order or payment form capture credit card, you know, those sorts of phrases, I'm not always putting in the exact right thing because, mm -hmm. I, because the way I look at it, my microscopic, um, you know, myopic view of my problem doesn't match what the rest of the world called it. And so if I spend five minutes crafting the words I use in my search, I find that my search results are much more relevant. Um, and then I'll start to go through and read the top five results and I'll start to capture verbiage from what people are saying on their pages. Oh, that's called an online shopping cart. Okay, so what I'm looking for is an online shopping cart. And then you can say top 10 online shopping carts and there's 10 blog posts about it. But until I knew to call it an online shopping cart, yeah. I was searching in forums somewhere about like, and I just get frustrated and I turn off Google. I'm like, screw it. I'm not, you know, not going right. to, not going to get what I want here. Right. So part of what your problem is when you're trying to automate is you don't even know what to call the product. Yeah. And so the first thing you have to do is Google it until Google teaches you what to start calling what you're looking for. And if they don't, mm -hmm let's say it's not out there. Let's say that like you're not coming up with a good name for it. Then I start to pick apart. Okay. Well, what am I trying to connect to what? And I'll say, okay, well, I'm trying to connect a CRM to, and if you, you know, customer relationship management tool to a project management tool. And then I'll start to, you know, use those as my keywords, you know, how to connect a CRM to a project management tool or, or whatever it is, try to give a name to the process. we well, are what you're really trying to do when you use Google is find what, what, what are the words that people are using to describe what you're doing? Are there, this is going to sound like a silly question, but um, are, can, can business owners find out that the thing that they want to automate, there isn't a process, you know, there isn't automation for yet? No, it happens. It happens all the time. Um, in that situation, so, so let's say that I've spent 50 minutes searches searching and I'm not finding, like there, there really isn't anything else out there that does what I want it to do. That's where I'll start to um, pick apart and I'll start to go to some specific sources. So I'll go to like a forum with, with other business owners who are, who are like me. So a mastermind, or a, a Facebook group, you'd be shocked at how many times there are Facebook groups out there of other business owners. Like, let's say that you're like, oh, I'm, I am a person who runs a bird babysitting business. Like, that's all I do is bird babysitting. And, and you're like, but, and I am so unique. I'm the only bird babysitter in my entire city. And I have like, you know, racks and racks of cages at my house. And, and like, I'll babysit them for months at a time. And I charge, you know, so like very unique niche thing, right? I yeah. bet you, I bet you a hundred dollars. Call me later. I'll pay you a hundred dollars if you can't find one. <laughs> and I haven't looked this up already, people. I haven't looked this up. There is a bird babysitting, you know, if, if that's a legitimate business that you do, um, if you go look on Facebook, there's probably a group um, of, of, of five to 10, 20, 30, a hundred other people across the country wow. who are doing what you do. And you ask them, Hey, you know, is there a way to do this? Or the other thing that I'll do is I'll, like, so let's say that I'm using Shopify or WooCommerce. I'll reach out to Shopify and WooCommerce and describe my problem and say, hey, I've spent 50 minutes searching for this online on Google and I can't find it. Um, what do you recommend? And mm -hmm. I, you'll be surprised how often the tools that you're using um, that someone in, the, in, their, in that database, and, and I, I've often sent like, I'll wait 15 minutes and open another ticket, wait 15 minutes, open another ticket to see if I can get three different people over there to look at it. Um, because I've found that different, re different representatives at different companies know different stuff. Shocking. Um, but, but yeah, so, so those are two good things that I would do. Find a mastermind group, find that. And then if you're not finding any, anything anywhere like that, um, what I'll do is I'll actually um, try to find a developer who can help me fix it. 
and I will post it on something like Upwork or FreeUp or one of these other tools that way <clears throat> and say, hey, this is the thing I'm trying to build or, or I'm trying to automate. <clears throat> what, what do you recommend? And you'll find, and then if nobody's responding to that, that's where you've got to find an automation expert. And you might want to find a VC firm because you might be sitting on top of a SaaS idea. Like if it's popular enough, if the problem you found is popular enough, you might be sitting on top of a brand new business idea. Yeah, that's sort of um, what I was thinking is if it's, if there's nothing out there like that and you need it, chances are good other people need it. And so it could be a thing. Well, and, and honestly, if you run across something like that, I mean, I, like, like you said in the beginning, I'm the head of business development at Roundsphere, and that's what we do, is we take systems and things like that that don't exist elsewhere, and we create SaaS products from them. So, oh. Yeah, so, so data automation, here's the sneaky thing that I'll tell everybody. Data automation is a billboard for bring me your manual tasks. And when I find one that I feel like is repeatable enough, we build a SaaS product out of it. Nice. Wow. That is fascinating. Okay. So, Will, I got to tell you, I've really enjoyed this. I've learned a ton. Uh, and I probably am going to Google no code solutions because um, I, I like to tinker a little bit as well. Um, but so, thank you so much. And will you tell the listeners? how they can find you and, and it sounds like um, they should be reaching out if they have an idea that they want to run by you. So yeah. please share. Well, we're, so, so you can, you can email me. So if you're emailing me about a business idea or something like that, it's will at round sphere, R O U N D S P H E R E.com. Um, and, and, you know, email me your idea that you're running across. I'll, Sometimes I'll just say, oh, there's actually a tool that does that, and here it is. I'll just, I'll just reply back with whatever tool I've come across because I spend a lot of time researching tools. Um, if you're looking to some, you know, automation, uh, dataautomation.com is our, is our website, and you can just email me at will, W-I-L-L, -L, at dataautomation.com. And again, we're here. Anybody who's listening to this, um, you are more than welcome to reach out. We'll give you a free half hour of, of uh, consulting and we have a free consulting. So if you come to our website, it says schedule a free consultation um, for people who mention our, our podcast, we actually go a couple of steps deeper um, and we'll actually help you automate something. So, so we're going to, we're going to spend that half wow. an hour actually trying to automate something versus give you a broad strokes overview. Um, and, and that's just an offer we, we like to give for, for people that have listened to our, our podcasts. Oh, wow. That's wonderful. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and so once again, thank you very much, Will, for spending some time with me. And listeners, thank you. This, this was a great subject. A lot of really good information here about how to automate. Remember, automate, delegate, eliminate. That's a great mantra, something to ask yourself a lot. Uh, and I'd like to thank our sponsor, audible.com. Uh, go to audibletrial.com slash business growth and sign up for the free trial and then check it out. Explore around, listen to things, listen to some audio books, listen to um, other stuff. Um, oh, that's interesting. Will, would you care to share your experience with audible.com? Yeah, I'd love to. So um, I've actually been a member of Audible's recurring subscription uh, for several years now. And, and by the way, anybody who's listening, this was not prearranged at all. <laughs> I, I, I heard her, you know, the sponsor of the episode being Audible. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love Audible. Um, I actually, I love that it, it connects to Alexa. So you can be like, Alexa, ask Audible to play insert name of book and it'll pick up right where you left off and play it anywhere in your house. Um, I, one of my favorite books to listen to on there um, is uh, a, a book called The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. Um, it's about book. small business. Oh, it's such a great book. And, and, yeah. and, it, and it relates to automation. If you don't systematize those processes and give people the same experience over and over again, um, you, you're just, you're going to go out of business. So it's so powerful. I, I, I have learned a lot of my business education. Obviously, I went to college, did that, you know learned a lot as I failed and, and looked at different things, but a lot of my education comes from listening to um, 
books on Audible, and I love the recurring. Like I pay fifteen bucks a month, and they give me a credit to go purchase um, a new book every month. And I do, I do that all the time. Um, wow. Love, 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 love Audible. I'm a, I'm a huge fantasy reader too. So I've got, I kind of splits. I go like business, self help, and then I got a whole bunch of fantasy stuff. Um, and I do that honestly more than I watch TV. So I'm, I'm a nice. huge fan. Wow, that is great. See, that's all I'm saying. Head on over there. Thanks for that, Will. And, yeah, and seriously, it was not planned. He, he messaged me <laughs> while yeah. I was talking about it, oh, which I just love. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so audibletrial.com slash business growth. Sign up for that trial. Check it out. You're going to want to um, do the recurring subscription. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, Goodbye and good day. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Oh, that's a cheer we used to do in softball. Uh, what? It's, uh, actually Geico. Whenever someone hit a triple, we would wave our bats and yell, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. But we never got to use it because we would only hit home runs. Annoying. The phrase is from Geico because they help save people money. Geico? Yeah, they were our team sponsor. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Full send with the driver? Check. Piercing iron through the wind? Check. Low checker, high spinner, flop to a tight pin? Check, check, and check. No matter what shot you need to pull off, there's one ball that's better for them all. The all-new TP5 and 5X from TaylorMade. With a newly redesigned dimple pattern, engineered for more distance, more control around the green, and better stability in the wind, it's the hottest tour ball in golf. So no matter what shot you face, there's one ball that's better for all. The TP5 and 5X from TaylorMade. Are you tired of the same old productivity hacks? Have you read the top 20 books on effectiveness and yet your work days and email inbox still causing anxiety, burnout, and even depression? Ready to learn the latest in brain-based modalities, techniques, and technologies to optimize your success and well-being? Welcome to the Focus to Evolve podcast where we'll illuminate your path to spacious productivity and balanced thriving. Each week, we dive into deeply insightful and immediately impactful methods to help you become highly effective while promoting health, profitability, and well-being. Say goodbye to the trance of busyness and hello to your highest potential. It's time to discover a new way of accelerating your mission, growth, and purpose. Join us on the Focus to Evolve podcast and get ready to live your most joyful, productive, and fulfilling life.